Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be stamping a whole slew of sentiments in one fell swoop, one impression, uh, using the Casual Taglines stamp set that just released. Now this has a whole set of sentiments in it, but they're all connected as one stamp. And this is a really great time uh, saving feature of these kinds of sets. So I'm just going to go ahead and position that over the top of a quarter sheet of black cardstock because I'm going to be heat embossing these with white embossing powder. So once I have that in place, I'm just gonna, um, I was gonna try to hold it in place with the magnet, but it seems like every time I try to mount a stamp, it just sticks to the cardstock and shifts it. So I have to reposition it again anyway. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take my anti-static pouch and this one's the embossing magic pouch. And this powder is gonna eliminate any moisture or electrostatic whatever electricity on the surface of the paper so that my embossing powder will stick only to my embossing ink. And my favorite embossing ink of all time is Versamark. I've used it for forever and it's reliable. I've, I've just started using it, fell in love with it, kept using it. So I don't know if it's the best. I always hate to call something the best. I always like to say this is the one I like using the most. So I'm just going to take a rag. I keep this rag to dry my hands off on my uh, work table. And I was using it to buff down the lid of the Misty because sometimes I press too hard when I use that CPR compression method. <laughs> I end up smashing things that are more delicate and then I get kind of a mushed uh, impression. So that's why I've got that rag there. And I'm going to pour some Detail White Embossing Powder. This one's by Stampendous, and I love this Detail Grind Embossing Powder. And I know there are other brands out there, so Hero Arts, um, probably Lawn Fawn have one. Um, wow Embossing probably has one too, but I've had this jar. I just keep using it till it's all gone. <laughs> and then I'll probably get more because I like it so much. So I have heat embossed this. I preheated my heat gun for about a minute. And then I had it on the seconds. It's a dual setting. And so I have it on setting number two for the highest heat um, to go ahead and emboss that. And you do want to, you know, alter that in the light, double check to make sure that everything got properly heat embossed. And that little clipboard is great because I don't have to worry about uh, burning my fingers. So now I'm going to take a Swiffer cloth and buff off any of the excess powder there so I get a nice rich black cardstock again. And then I'm going to line up that die and use some washi tape to make sure it doesn't move and send that through my Gemini Junior. And here you can see I've got all these sentiments pre-cut into strips. They're nice and straight. I like to store these in a baggie with the um, stamp set so that the next time I need them, I can you know, just go grab them because they've already been done. So now I'm gonna take the abstract nature set and I've grabbed this little sprig. It's so cute with this little, his little leaves and I've got a quarter sheet of that uh, pale I think it's called pale rose cardstock um, by Basil part of the card shop line it's a nice uh, heavy hundred pound cardstock and I'm gonna ink up with some water-based dye ink this is by Catherine Pooler and this is the cameo coral and I'm gonna extend the height of this little sprig by just nesting another impression along the top there. So it looks like I have different little sprigs of different heights, even though it's all just the same stamp. And after I have all these stamped uh, exactly where I want them, I'm gonna clean off this stamp very thoroughly. And I like to keep two of those sh stamp chamois on hand. One is wetter for cleaning off, and then I keep one that I've squeezed most of the water out of it so it's drier. To a dry off the stamp. And then I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to flip it to setting number one. Like I said, it's a dual uh, dual speed or dual heat embossing powder. So one is the lower heat. And I just want to dry that water-based ink on the surface of the paper. Now I did get a little bit of an ink smudge off the tip of my finger and that made me so mad, but I grabbed my Tombow sand eraser and I was able to sand away 
uh, most of it. And so I'd, unless somebody's really looking for it, they're not going to see it on the finished card. So now I'm going to take that little sprig and I've taken it off the acrylic block that I used and I'm going to go ahead and get that position and grab another image, kind of an accent image with some textural elements to it and get those uh, mounted in place. And I'm just going to press firmly, make sure that they haven't, uh, you know, sometimes when they stick too loose, they're going to fall off uh, when you're when you go to stamp. So I had to press them on there firmly. Now I'm going to prep the surface of this paper again with the anti-static pouch because I want to heat emboss over the top of this white or this um, water-based dye ink. And I want to make sure that my embossing powder only sticks to where the Versamark is going to be stamped and not to those uh, coral uh, sprigs there. So I'm going to go ahead, once again, stamp these with Versamark and then take my rag there and just buff those down so I've got a nice crisp impression everywhere that didn't get mushed because I was too aggressive with the CPR compressions. And then I'm going to pour, again, the same detail white embossing powder over the top of it. And then just heat it up. And remember, when you're heat embossing, you want to use the higher, the setting number two, uh, on that uh, WOW embossing gun. Setting number one is really nice when you just need to warm things up, but not necessarily heat emboss them. You kind of need the higher heat for the heat embossing to work. So now I'm gonna take a an A2 card. This is made of Nina Solar White, 80 pound, and I've got that scored already, but I'm gonna line that up inside my uh, Misty platform. And this is the regular sized one because I realized, oh, my mini is not gonna work for this. I need to be able to put the card in there completely open. <laughs> so I had to grab the regular size one. And then I'm gonna take one of these images, again, from the Abstract Nature uh, set and ink that up with some grapefruit ink. This is a water-based dye ink by Concord and Ninth. And I love this color. And I decided I wanted to create kind of an ombre effect. So once I stamped with the grapefruit, which is lighter, I came in with more of that Cameo Coral by Catherine Pooler and just inked up the lower half. And then I'm going to take one of those smoothies. It's a kind of a spongy blender and it has a nice rounded edge. And I'm just going to smooth and blend out the line of the ink pad there. So I have a nice transition from the darker ink into the lighter ink color. And I didn't have to clean off my stamp at that point because I was going from a lighter color to a darker color or and they weren't gonna be super contrasting. You know, like if you had green after you'd used yellow, you kinda wanna make sure that you're not cross-contaminating your ink pads and clean them up. But these two were similar and uh, one was darker than the other. So now I'm gonna take a sentiment from the casual sentiments casual greeting set. I love this font because it's chunky and kind of retro. And I'm going to go ahead and get that position in place. And then I want to dry this water-based ink one more time with my heat gun. And then again, I'm going to prep the surface with my anti-static pouch because uh, I want to make sure that that whole surface is completely dry and there's no moisture left on it. And then I can ink up that sentiment with my Versamark ink and then go ahead and stamp that down where I want it. I'm going to grab that same detail white embossing powder and pour that over the top, tap off the excess, and then go ahead and grab my heat gun. Now sometimes if you're working with a detail grind uh, powder, you'll still get a little bit that sticks. And I just took a tiny brush just to make sure I got any little stray bits of embossing powder swept away there. And then I went ahead and heat embossed. And I'm gonna mount this to my card front with some tape runner really quick. And then I'm going to smooth it down on the back side. This way I don't smear anything on the front of my card in case my hands are wet or I have ink on my hands. I always flip it over and burnish it from the back side there. Now my sentiment strip, which was uh, ready to go, I pulled the one I wanted to use or the two that I wanted to use. And this one's pretty long, so I'm just gonna snip it right here where it makes sense as you're, you know, when you look at the, the way the words are divided out. And then I'm gonna put some foam tape on the back of each of those and then mount them in place. So I'm just gonna kind of stack them um, offset from each other uh, to create kind of, uh, oh, how do I wanna say it? If I shoved them all to the left, it wouldn't really look all that aesthetically pleasing. So it looks better if I stagger them in this fashion. 
um, on the card front than if I flushed them all to the left or flushed them all to the right. And then when you open the card, you know, I've got friends who would totally, totally crack up over a card like this. And I think it's really fun. So I hope you enjoyed this and you'll give a try to uh, heat embossing over water-based dyings and stamping all your sentiments at one time. Thanks for watching.